Rebecca, you are all alone. Come to where the action is. Amen. You are all welcome to our third um, um, yes, I said you are all welcome to our third turning point service. Amen. Amen. As LPM said last month, we were fasting, so we couldn't have it. A little over two years ago, you know, I was just complaining to the Lord about so many things. And then the Lord was also asking me so many things. And one of the things he asked me was that you used to, nobody should sit on that side, everybody, so that my eyes would be focused. Rebecca, it's good to see you at this location. It's very powerful. No, where are you going? Ah, oh, okay, all right. I thought you, you could not take the, um, the compliment. Okay. When you settle, I'll continue. Francis, come back to your seat. Come back. When we were in school, bad boys always sit at the back. What a shock. In the house of God, there are no bad boys. Is that not the case? It's the case. Yeah. Okay. So I can continue. Yes. What did I stop? Try also to turn off your phones. You were saying that you were asking God. Yeah, I was asking God so many questions. And then God was also asking me a lot of questions. And one of the things that he spoke to me about strongly was turning point service. And he reminded me, those of you who were around those um, times, how our turning point services were so powerful. People had a lot of testimonies. Yeah. I don't know if you were there at that time. You know, so then the Lord suddenly asked me, so what happened? You know, and the usual excuse, oh, you know, we are now coming out of COVID and, you know, and then also, actually, the, the, the problem I had was that I had a very stressful, difficult job, very stressful, you know, such that Saturdays, I work all day. I don't even have the peace of mind when I am asleep. I am asleep, but my mind is wide awake. You know, Sunday when I come to church, I mean, I can't wait to get home. When I get home, as soon as I get home and I have something to eat, I will turn on my laptop and will be working. Wow. You know, it was very tough for me. So, I prayed to God and I said that, if he gives me a job that is less stressful, then I will start turning point service. Oh, okay. But for now, it ain't going to happen. Because like Friday at this time, you will not find me here. I will still be working. You know. So I looked for jobs for a long time, always sending you know, resumes. You know, one day I was just so close to getting a job, and something happened. But I could handle it because the day before I got my letter that the job opening was closed, I had a dream. And the letter that I saw in my dream was exactly what was sent to me. Wow. But, I, but I had packed all my things from my workplace because I had gone to the fourth um, session, and everything had been 
you know, given to me. So I knew that was a done deal. But it just went away like that. But I knew that once you pray about something, you leave it. You know, you leave it alone. You see? And at this point in my life, the Lord has done so many things for me that I don't want to doubt him. Anything that does not happen my way, it means that it is not God's will. But if it is God's will, it will come to pass. Amen. So one day after service, Sunday service, you know, I was going home and I was saying that, ah, it's that time again that when I get home, you know, I'm going to work. So whilst I was on my way, the Lord dropped an idea in my mind that call this person, call this guy. And I was wondering why should I call him? Said, call him and tell him that you are looking for a job. And I had worked with that person before and was so happy with my work. So the Lord said that call this person. So when I looked at the time, it was 6.30. I said, by the time I get home, it will be like 8.30 or so. So why should I call him? But when I got home, I was obedient, and then I called the guy. When I called him, he picked up. And I told him my plight. He says, don't worry. Send me your resume. Between the time I sent my resume and the time I got the job offer, it was one week. A period of one week. Wow. But prior to that, when I lost that job, I mean, I didn't start, but I knew I was going to get it. I spoke with my friend. And he told him that anything that God's hand is in it, you don't struggle. Mm. So leave it alone. So I left it. And it's true. What the Lord gave me in return. It was not a struggle. Within a week, in fact, when I called the gentleman, he said I should send my resume. I sent it. He said I should come and see him. He asked me to go and see somebody. Then I remembered what the bishop said, that delay means cancellation. So I had planned to go see him the following week. But then I remembered what Bishop said. Delay means cancellation. Why do you want to go and see this person the following week? Just go. So I went. I sat down. And I ran my mouth. In fact, it was not even an, you know, it was not interview per se. The guy saw my, he says, I'm very happy with what I see. That was it. That was all. And I'm telling you that for how many years that I have been working in corporate America, I've never come by a job that gives me peace of mind. Wow. I mean, I see this to the glory of God. In everywhere you work, there are ups and downs. But the Lord too has given me grace to handle it, but it is nowhere near places that I have worked. So, I, so by the grace of God, I enjoy absolute peace of mind. I don't go to bed and then try to think about, hey, what is it? What did I do? Uh, no, no, is there something going on? No, no. By the grace of God, I don't have that problem at all. You understand? Your hand clap is like um, it has COVID. Or it's coming from. It's coming out of COVID. You know? And that same God who has brought me this far will also bring you to where you need to be. Amen. You understand? Yes. So now, 
that the Lord has answered my prayer. What next? Because I told him that when I get a job that comes with peace of mind, I will do the turning point. So this turning point is my covenant with God. Amen. You know, I'm trying to tell you something. So to me, it does not depend on how you feel. And it does not depend on whether you come or you don't come. It does not depend on that. I am prepared to preach to chess because this is my covenant Amen. with the Lord. And the Lord is looking for people who are faithful Amen. because he is always faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He will not send forth his word and his word will not come back to him void. But it will accomplish every purpose for which the word was sent out. And the Bible says that when you seek first his kingdom, when you seek first his, hey, 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 no talking. When, Ayomi, you are there, so please, that's your job, no, for you to be at the back there. Don't join them. So, you see, when you seek his kingdom first, when you put his kingdom first, there is nothing that he cannot do. Amen. Say amen. amen. You see, if you have not put God to test, you don't know what he can do. And sometimes the problem is that we use our fickle mind. Our mind is so fickle. Our mind is even smaller than the mind of chicken. You know, and we want to Open the sandwich, you know, open the promises of God, like how you open sandwich. You know when you open sandwich, and then you take some things out, and then you put it um, together, you know, it doesn't look nice again. Uh -huh. So when God promises us something, then we begin to open up the sandwich, and then we take the onion out, we take <laughs> other things out, and then we try to, you know, put it together. And it doesn't look nice. And sometimes, you know, the way we bargain with God, it's as though we are doing him a favor. Yes. But you know what? If, up to, if from now to when God will come back, if he does not do anything for us, what he has done for us up to now, it's okay. It's more than enough. It's more than enough. But I believe that the Bible also says that those who know they are God, they will do exploit. Amen. And if you put God to test, if you put him to test and you are faithful, he will come true. Amen. Do you understand it? Yes. You know, and I want you to renew your mind and know that our God is great and mighty. Amen. I mean, he is such a power. You see, he is such a powerful God, very powerful, who is not limited by anything. Amen. You see, attempt to travel and see as you are on the sea for a very long time, mm. you will see, I mean, uh, what kind of person is this who can create this vast ocean? And can determine the boundaries that it will not cross. Mm. He is the one that we are dealing with. You know? But sometimes we think that we are wiser than God. Or God's, God is not the person who can keep his promises. Mm. So we are just bargaining, you know, with him. But... <laughs> Look at Abraham and look at Jacob and look at Isaac. God did not bring them this far to humiliate them. Mm. He kept his promises. Amen. And I pray to God that we will keep our promises. We should never be tired for anything that we do for the Lord. Amen. No, we shouldn't. 
be tired for anything that we do for the Lord. We, we should even be excited that oh, God yes. gives us an opportunity. opportunity. You know, because n- not very long, we will all meet the Lord. Yes. Right? Yes. Just 20 years, 30 years, just add 20 to your life. Or 30 years to your life. It is no long from now. I mean, I can promise you and I can tell you that. You know, even if you have to be here for the next 100 years, it will just come. By eternity, eternity is forever. You know, so I'm praying that when we stand before the Lord, we will be able to give a proper account to God for all the things that he has given us an opportunity and we have blown it. But I pray that when our time comes, it will not be so. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight, I just want to talk about the power of the blood. Wow. The, power the power of the blood. Of the blood. And how to apply the blood. You understand what I'm saying? The power of the blood. How to also apply the blood. We just celebrated um, Easter. And this week, I think the Jewish people are celebrating what? They are celebrating Passover. So you can also call my, my message Passover. Because the blood is connected with Passover. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. The blood is connected with Passover. And Christians have tremendous power. Mm. You see, one thing that the devil does is for you not to know the power that you have. You know, if you don't know the power you have, you will not be able to apply the power that you have. You must know who you are first, and you must know the power you have. One of the things that the devil does is for you not to recognize the power you have to blind you so that you will not notice or you will not learn the power you have, let alone to use the power. And many believers don't know the power that they have. And because they don't know the power that they have, they don't also know how to use it. You can give a child $100 and he would not know the importance of it. You see, Anneliese, when you give her $100, do you think that she will know what it is? She will not know. But you, you know. Oh, yes. And you know what it can do. Hallelujah. (laughs) And there are many Christians who don't know the power of the blood of Jesus. Mm. So because they don't know the power of the blood of Jesus, they don't know how to use it. So let's turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter number 12. And I'm reading from verse number 11. Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood. Have you seen the scripture before? Yes. Okay. And they overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Amen. This scripture is like a dynamite or it's like a nuclear weapon. The Bible says that and they overcame him. Who is they? Who is they? The believers. believers. 
Who else? You. Are you part of the day? Yes. Hello? Yes. Are you part of the day? I part of the day. Say, I am part of the day. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that we believers, we overcome. Who is him? Satan. Him is who? Satan. He's Satan. The devil. Hallelujah. Amen. So we believers, we overcome Satan. You can put your name there. Rebecca, you can overcome Satan. You actually overcome Satan. Hallelujah. Amen. By what? By the blood. So that means that the blood of the lamb is a weapon. Amen. Don't start yawning now because I'm not going to finish hey, now. Stop that you have been sleeping the whole week. Hey. So stop yawning. Right? So we believers, the Bible says that we have power to overcome Satan. Amen. And that power is the blood of the lamb. Amen. Amen. Do you get it? Because the Bible says that, and they, and we have established who belongs to the day. Me, I belong to the day. We Christians, we are part of the day. Amen. And the Bible says that we overcome him, and the him is Satan. Hmm. So that means that as far as we are concerned, believers should not be afraid of Satan. Okay. Is that the case? Yes. We should not be afraid of Satan. But unfortunately, we are afraid of Satan. Yes, and you know that yes, Satan is you know that Satan is also afraid of us. Yes. He fears us. So he would try as much as possible for you to know that you don't have any power over him. That is all that he does. But tonight, I want you to know that you have a power that is so powerful. Amen. That is so tremendous. Amen. That is even more than any power of this world, hmm. including nuclear weapons. Those weapons that have been sent to Ukraine, it, has, it comes nowhere near the power that you have. Hmm. If Ukrainians have this power, the war would have been over a long time oh. ago. Long time ago. The blood, the blood the of the lamb. The the lamb. Alright? So the blood of the lamb, the Bible says that it is power. Amen. Say amen. amen. If you don't say amen, you will soon be yawning and you will soon fall asleep. Amen. amen. So the Bible says that the blood of the lamb is power. Let's look at another power. And by the word of their testimony, so we do not only overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb, but also by the word of their testimony. testimony. So our testimony is also a weapon. Amen. We are reading the scriptures. Oh, yes. Our testimony is also a weapon. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's also look at another weapon we have. You want to see another weapon? Yeah. Okay. Not loving our lives. And they loved not their lives hey. unto the death. So, those who can also defeat Satan, or Satan is afraid of people who don't love their lives. They don't care whether they live or die. As far as they are concerned, for them to live is not what is important. You understand? They are part of God's army. Amen. And the Bible says that those type of people, they are committed Christians. Amen. They don't care whether they live. I mean, what is important to them is whether they live or they die. That is not what is important to them. What is important to them is to be committed to their Lord and their Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That is all that they live for. Amen. They are commitment to the Lord. Is the most important thing. Amen. It also means that people who are very committed in what they do, as far as God is concerned, those people, they are a weapon themselves. Mm. If you are dealing with somebody who 
is not afraid to die. That person is a very dangerous person. You see, after September 11th, there have been so many laws. <laughs> USA Patriot Act. Many laws. If you go to the banking sector, there are so many banking laws because of September 11th. What happened? Because America dealt with an enemy who was not afraid to die. So now when you travel, one of the regulations is that don't take water. Don't, I mean, if you have water, you have to consume it. You have to drink the water first. You can't take it in. But when you come to church and then we tell you that don't bring water here, ah, there is a problem. Don't take, don't take, don't take, don't take food. But people will you know, you know, smuggle food. They will smuggle coffee. And you see, we, 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 we have this attitude that we also don't clean up after ourselves. Where we drink is where we leave everything. I'm coming from that room there. Some people gather there to eat. They have left everything there. You understand what I'm saying? So when you are dealing with people who are not afraid to die, <laughs> you better watch out. They are very dangerous. Oh, yes. Very dangerous. You want to live. Yes. The modern day Christians, they want to live. They don't want anything that will inconvenience them. No, not at all. They want to live. Meanwhile, we say that we are part of God's army. Mm. When, you, when you are enlisted, when you are enlisted in the army, they do not guarantee that you will live. Oh, no, 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 no. Bro, is that what happens? They actually tell you that this kind of job, you can die at any time, isn't it? You give your information who they should contact. You know, when you go to war, everything, you have your badge, your name, your nest of kin, what should happen to you, even when they take your application, what should happen to you when you die, should you be cremated, or, you know, they should bring your body, yeah, they, they say, oh, because when, when you are a part of God's army, you are not guaranteed that you will live, or you will, you, you know, you will die, it is, death is part of it. You see, so every day we say, oh, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. No, you can't plead the blood alone. <laughs> Have you heard people who always scream, oh, I plead the blood, Satan. The blood, the blood. Hey, Satan, the blood is up. Oh, no. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. <laughs> it does not, you see, and you have pleaded the blood for a long time. And it has nowhere because you, you want to live. <laughs> oh, yeah. There is, no, I'm even turning point service, just, just, you know, Friday, just to unwind and then just come and say that, you know what, I cannot, I cannot live only on Sunday meal alone. I also need the Friday meal just to add it to it. No, you don't, no, you don't want to. But you plead the blood. Every day you are, ask yourself. How many times have you pleaded the blood? Every day, many times in a day. And has that worked? Yes, it works. The blood works. If you go through everything, because what the Bible says is true. And they overcame him. We overcome Satan through the blood. Yes. Amen. And by the word, by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Those who do not love their lives unto death, th the devil is afraid of them. True. You see, if you want to be my friend, love what I love. And you will be my friend. True. And what I love, you see, if all my children, right, they will align themselves to what I love, there is no end inside what I will do for them. 
Any, I mean, anything they want, I'll give it to them. Wow. And it is, it, is, it is the truth. But you see, there are some people, you live with them, they will not take notice of the things you love. Mm. But they want doors, car doors to be open for them to sit in. Mm. They want everything to be everything. done for them. Meanwhile, they oppose or they don't align themselves to the things that you love. It does not work that way. It doesn't work. Proverbs 8 verse 17. The scriptures say that I love those I love. Yesterday, somebody called me at work. He called me on behalf of his church member that he has some legal issues and then he wants me to help. And he called me and said that, Reverend, by all means, find a way to help this person. And, I, and then I said that, why is this person so... He says, the person plays my bass guitar. He's very important. Wow. He says, the person is extremely important. So my mind went on this scripture. In John chapter 15, right? The Bible says that anyone who bears fruits, what happens? That person is pruned so that he will bear much fruit. Is that the case? So if you are fruitful, as far as God is concerned, he prunes you so that you can even bear much more fruit. God is interested in your fruit bearing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then the scripture in Luke 7, the centurion whose son, no, whose servant was sick. That centurion made connections, made connections for the servant to see Jesus. Let me think about it. Say, I mean, if your servant is sick and you are so concerned about the servant such that you make connections with the disciples for the disciples to connect you so that you can see Jesus so that Jesus can touch that servant. What do you think? The servant is, the servant is extremely important. The servant is important. Amen. Very important. Otherwise, he will not go through that trouble to make connections so that Jesus could touch the servant. Do you agree with me that the servant was very important to the centurion? Yes. He was. Let's come back to this scripture. God will stand by you. Amen. He will stand by you. He will salute you. Read the scripture in Acts chapter 7. When Stephen was martyred, God opened his eyes. Because you see, Stephen loved the things that God loved. He loved the things that God loved. And when God saw how Steve, you know, Stephen just spoke powerfully about him, God opened his eyes to see him just clapping for him. He says, wow, Stephen, this is a powerful testimony of your relationship with me. And God said, oh, Stephen, these people, they are not worth your time. I mean, just come home. Just, I mean, just come. Don't waste your time on these people. Just, 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 just come home. This scripture is saying that we overcome. I have coined my own scripture out of this. The Bible says that we overcome Satan. Right? By the blood and by the word of our, of our testimony. So, we overcome Satan. When we testify, we overcome Satan. When we testify of what the Bible says the blood of Jesus has done for us. That is all that the scripture means. We, 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 we testify 
about what the Bible says the blood of Jesus has done for us. Amen. That's all. So when you testify about what the Bible says the blood of Jesus has done for us, it is a powerful weapon. Amen. Say amen. amen. Amen means let it be. Let me say it again. We testify, we testify about what the Bible says the blood of Jesus has done for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how we overcome Satan. So we overcome Satan when we testify personally to what the Bible says the blood of Jesus has done for us. Can we all say it? Can we try it? Okay. So I will say it and then you shall repeat after me. We overcome Satan when we testify personally to what the word of God says the blood of Jesus does for us. Amen. Amen. That is how you overcome Satan. Amen. Amen. So if we overcome Satan by testifying personally of what the word of God says, the blood of Jesus does for us, then we, then we have to know what the word of God says concerning the blood. Mm. Is that not the case? Because if you don't know what the word of God says concerning the blood, how can, how can the blood become a weapon? How can you use it? You can't use it. Then you will say, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. It means that you don't know what the Bible says the, 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 the blood does for us. So I will show you an example from the Old Testament. Amen. So let's go to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus 12. Let's start from verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Continue. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Continue. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Continue. Do you understand it? Do you? Yes. Oh, don't just... Ah, are you lizards? Open your mouth, don't just <laughs> nod because you are not lizards. <laughs> your land shall be without blemish. Amen. A male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall, no, you will take the lamb from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, 
and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And that shall ye eat it with your loins gathered, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Okay, continue. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away living out of your houses. For whosoever eateth living bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day there shall be the holy convocation. And in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done for you. Continue. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. Continue. In the, month, in the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at even ye shall eat unleavened bread until one and twentieth day of the month at even. Okay, continue. Seven days shall there be no living found in your house. For whosoever eateth that which is living, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Continue. Ye shall eat nothing living in your habitation, shall ye eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamp according to your families and kill the Passover. Kill what? The Passover. Kill what? The Passover. Okay. So, no, no, hold on. What if God is saying that they should kill the Passover? Can you say that the Passover is a lamb? Yeah. So, sorry? Because, the, because God says that kill the Passover. So God is saying that kill the lamb. The lamb. So the lamb is the Passover, right? Mm -hmm. So, can we say that the Jewish Passover is killing of the lamb? Does it mean that? Yeah. Okay, all right. So let's continue. And ye shall, no, go back to 21 first. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families. And then kill the Passover. Let's continue. And ye shall take, so... Moses is giving them instructions. You realize that at first, Moses received instructions from the Lord. Did you notice that? Yes. And then now, Moses is giving instructions to the elders. He has, he has received that from the Lord first. And now he is giving the instructions to the elders. So he said that now, 
draw out. You remember in the beginning, God told Moses, take, talk to the fathers. Let them, you know, reserve a lamb for the Passover. Now he's given them this instruction that the lamb that you kept, now draw it out and kill it. The lamb is Passover. So then he's giving them instructions as to how the lamb should be killed. He says, kill the lamb and then catch the blood in a basin. Did you see that? Catch the blood in a basin. Then after that, ye shall take a bunch of hyssop. Take a bunch of hyssop. Hyssop is like broom. You know broom? Okay, take the bunch of hyssop and then what do you have to do? Dip it. Dip it in the blood. So now, we, you know, you have caught the blood in a basin. But the instruction that God gave was that take the blood and then apply the blood to your doorpost. How are they going to do it? Through the hyssop. Please, follow me, because it's going to be important to you. So after today, you don't go and say, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. It will not go anywhere. You have to follow the instruction. All right? So now the blood is in the basin. The blood in the basin does not do the work. It's just like saying, I plead the blood. The blood is in the basin. For the blood to work for you, you have to transfer the blood to Your doorpost. That is what God said. You follow me? And how you do it is that take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and then strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door. Of his house until morning. Do you follow me after now? Yeah. Okay. So the blood alone in the basin cannot get a job done. You have to transfer the blood through the medium of what? The hyssop. And then apply the blood on your doorpost. So then it will be seen. This instruction was given to the believers. To the Jewish people. All right? And then there was another instruction also. It says that do not go out until the morning. So the blood only protects those who are obedient. So if you do the first part and you don't do the second part, the blood will not work for you. So you plead the blood and you are still disobedient to the word of God. It will have no effect. The blood protects those who are obedient. Do you follow me up to now? Yes. Let's look at 1 Timothy. Sorry, Peter. I think 1 Peter chapter 1 or so. 1 Peter 1 and verse number 1. 1 Peter 1 and verse number 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience. Unto what? Obedience. And sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Before the sprinkling of the blood comes, what comes before? Obedience. Obedience. You follow me? Yes. 
Listen, this is very powerful. If you don't get this, you wouldn't know how to plead the blood. The, the blood is a weapon in your hands, but you can't use it because you don't know how to use it. You may have a powerful weapon in your hands, but you don't know how to use it. Is it possible you can kill yourself with the same weapon? Yes. 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 So you have to learn how to use it. So the Bible says that before, oh, please bring me the two. Before, before the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus, there must be what? Obedience. There must be what? Obedience. Obedience. So if you are not obedient and you are disobedient, Christian, the blood of Jesus does not work for you at all. Yes. Isn't it? Am I the one saying it? We are reading the scriptures, right? Okay. Can I say it again? You may be a Christian, but if you are a disobedient Christian, the blood of Jesus does not, does not work for you. So if somebody says, grace unto you and peace be multiplied, it does not work. It will not work because you are a disobedient what? You are disobedient Christian. So the blood does not work for you. So you see people who, are, who say they have been Christians for a long, but there is nothing to show. When you investigate, you find out that they are not obedient to God's word. God is saying that for the blood to protect you, stay inside. Why do you have to stay inside? Because the spirit of death is moving in the night, it passing by. So those who belong to God, a clear instruction has come. Stay inside. You remember Rahab? A clear instruction was given that for you to hold us to this covenant or this agreement, don't go outside. When we come, try to stay inside and then use that flag. The flag that we have given to you. Tie it on your window and stay inside. It, and then they told her, if you don't do that and then you are killed, you cannot blame us. Your blood can never be on us. So the blood of Jesus protects those who are obedient. If you are not obedient, forget about it. Grace and peace will not be multiplied to you. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, Reverend. Okay. So let's go back to Revelation from where we left off. Oh, bro. Revelation, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. 11. 11, please. 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of, of the lamb. So now we know the blood, right? Yes. <laughs> and then by the word. So now we are going to talk about the word of our testimony. Is that the case? Yes. By the word of our testimony. Okay? So your testimony. And what did I say about testimony? Let what you say, your testimony is repeating the same thing as. Your testimony is confessing what the Bible says the blood of Jesus has done. That is your testimony. Is that not the case? Yes. Uh -huh. So, the hyssop is supposed to get the blood to the door. The door post, right? Yes. Without the hyssop, the blood cannot get to where it has to be. The hyssop is the same as your testimony. So I said that we overcome Satan by what? The blood of the lamb. By the blood of, of the lamb. And what is that? By testifying as to what the Bible says the blood of Jesus has done. So your testimony is saying what the 
Bible says the blood of Jesus has done. That is your testimony. So the application of the blood depends on what you say. I hear you. Of what the Bible says the blood of Jesus has done. So if you don't say it, it does not, the blood still remains in the basin. But for the blood to work, it has to be transferred from the basin now to the doorpost. But if the blood is in the basin and the spirit of death is passing by, will the spirit of death see the blood in the basin in your bedroom? No. no. So what will happen to you? You will, be killed. you will be killed. Because as the spirit of death was moving, that spirit did not see the blood on your doorpost. Your, the blood you have is in the house. It, it was not applied because you did not have hyssop to apply. And the hyssop is your testimony because we overcome the devil by the blood and by the word. So saying what the Bible says, the blood of Jesus has done for you. That is what gets the job done. Do you understand it so far? Yes. That is what gets the job done. So what it means is that you make the words of your mouth agree with the word of God. You make the word of your mouth or what you say must correspond to what the Bible says concerning what the blood of Jesus has done for you. Amen. So, you can choose to say whatever you want to say. And there are some people, they are specialists in saying the wrong things. Especially in America. We have a lot of things that we say. That we don't mean it. But we say it anyway. You know, James tells us that our mouth is like a rudder. It is very small. He says that, in fact, he compared our mouth to the rudder of a ship. He says the ship is huge. Huge ship. But it's controlled by a rudder, which is very small. But this small rudder, it controls wherever the ship goes. Yes. And he says that our mouth mm -hmm. is also a small part of our body, but it controls where we go. So you can drive your mouth, you can drive your mouth to hit a bridge. Wherever you want your life to go, your mouth controls it. So somebody, you know, will be having a conversation and they'll say, oh, today I didn't have a good day at all. That is a case. Some people will be happy and then they'll say, oh, I was tickled to death. What is that? You are calling the spirit of death upon yourself. That is what happens. Yeah, some people will be on cloud nine and then they will say, oh man, I was, you know, I was dying laughing. Have you heard that expression before? Yes. You see, if you don't understand it, don't say it. And if you have been saying it, stop because you are inviting the spirit of death. Your testimony, that is your testimony. Your testimony is a weapon. And look at what you say with your mouth. You see, I always pray for this lady, sometimes twice, but at least every day. You know, and then I always tell her that stop saying what you are saying because it cancels my prayer. No matter how, how often I pray. And then I tell you that the moment what you say corresponds with the prayer, that will be the beginning of your, of your breakthrough. Amen. True. And after I've prayed for her, oh, I don't feel good. I feel like something is going to happen to me. I don't feel normal. I, I, I mean, you cancel everything. <laughs> I don't feel normal. 
I feel that something is going to happen to me. I mean, I mean. I said, listen, that's your testimony. That's your testimony. I don't feel normal. It's your testimony. I feel I'm going to die. That is your testimony. That's your testimony. You see, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Quickly. Hebrews 3, verse number 1. Hebrews 3, 1, please. You look sleepy. Do you understand what I'm saying? I use it all the time and it works. It really works. If you know what the Bible says about what the blood of Jesus has done, it works. Powerful. You can also use your mouth to confess negative things. And it will also work. Exactly. The Bible says that whatsoever you say, you will have it. If you confess negative things, hey, me, I don't think that anybody likes me. Yes, that is your confession. And that is what you will get. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Are we partakers? Oh, yes. Of the heavenly calling. Yes. It says, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. Our profession means our confession. So Jesus Christ is our high priest. Right? He is our high priest. And what is he doing? He confesses before God the things we say. Because we don't have any right before, the, you know, before God's presence. So Jesus Christ, who is our high priest, he is the one who makes intercessions. And the things that we say, our confessions, our testimony, is what he repeats before God. So, if you don't have any good thing to say, what you say is what God repeats. So, if you say that, I, I was tickled to death, that is your profession. And that is your confession. That is what your high priest, what is the job of a high priest anyway? He prays for you. He makes intercessions for you. He conducts, you know, sacrifices for you. And prayer is part of sacrifice. So if you don't have anything to say, and I keep telling this person, stop saying that I don't feel normal. I feel something is going to happen to me. And I keep praying and praying and praying. But still, I said, the moment you stop the negative confession will be the beginning to your breakthrough. Amen. And to your healing. We can carry you to conventions. We can carry you to deliverance session. But if what you say is contrary to what the word of God says. It will not, it will not work for you. That is your confession. You understand? Yes. That's your confession. The Bible says that Psalm 107. Let's look at Psalm 107, verse number one. Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For his what? For his good. And his mercy, and his mercy endured forever. forever. Verse number two. Verse number two. Let the redeemed of the Lord, of the Lord say so. Do what? Say so. Uh -huh. Let's tie it to Revelation 12, 11. I told you about your testimony. Your testimony is what? what you your profession. Your confession. And the Bible says that your confession, your testimony is a powerful weapon. And this scripture is telling us that let the redeemed, the one who is redeemed from sin, the one who is redeemed from evil spirits, let that person say so. So the Bible says that your testimony it's a powerful weapon. So Amen. if you don't say anything, if you say nothing, God has nothing to say before his father. He has nothing. So the Bible says that, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. So if God has redeemed you, so. you have to say it. You have to say so. 
Because no confession, no high priest. Oh, wow. oh yeah, no confession. No high because the Bible says that let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So if you don't confess anything, your high priest does not have anything to say. No confession, no high priest. So you see, those of you who don't pray, your high priest has nothing to say because you don't open your mouth to say nothing. So your high priest does not have anything to say. He has nothing to say. He's waiting for you. But you don't say anything. And the moment you also open your mouth, negative. Negative. Nothing good comes out of your mouth. So, so negative. So, so negative. And it is no good. Because when you say negative things, you invite evil spirits. I mean, the first word that comes off your mouth, oh, it's not going to be nice. You see, that is your confession. And, and I can tell you, it will not be nice. You can say, oh, you didn't mean it. or you said, No, you have said it. Yes. But because the Bible says that every idle word that we speak, we are going to give an account. So you see, some of you have been blaming your grandmothers, your great-grandmothers for your predicament. You are your own enemy. You are your own enemy. Proverbs 18, 21. Proverbs 18, 21, please. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death. And life are in the power of the tongue. So, in your tongue, there is death and there is life. life. Mm. So, it depends on which direction you want to go. If you love death, you will have it. You will know the fruit that will come out is the fruit of death. The things that will come out of your mouth will be negative things negative thing. I mean, you have not even attended the interview, but you have said within yourself, and you have told somebody that you don't think that you will even get a job. Will you get a job? Why? Because it is your testimony. And what you testify is what your high priest will carry. Say, oh God, look at what he's saying. So, Because the Bible says that Jesus ever makes intercession for us. So whatever you say, so think about the negative things that you have said concerning yourself. Somebody who is fearfully and wonderfully made. So are you surprised that your life is the way it is because of the negative things you say? If you are around people who are so negative, they don't think that you can amount to anything Run away from them. Don't associate yourself with them. You You see, there are people, because of familiarity, they think that you, there can never be anything good about you or from you because they are so familiar with you. But they will turn to somebody else because they don't know the person. When the person goes, "Ah, ah, 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 oh, prophesy, prophesy, ah, ah, prophesy. (laughs) Even the cough is a prophecy. Such people turn away from them. Just, 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 yeah, it is the familiarity that is, you know, making them, you know, behave that way. And kill it before they start, you know, raining curses on you. Don't allow negative people to be around you. Don't allow them. They always don't have any good thing to say. What comes out of, of their mouth? Is negative. And the Bible says that let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And we overcome, we, we overcome Satan by the words that we say. So let what you say correspond to what the Bible says. Amen. One day, somebody was looking for a job. And another person told him, be careful because at your age, 
at your age, it's very difficult to get a job at your age. So think about it. You see, such negative thoughts, right, will just push you down. It will dampen your spirit. And then you begin to think that, oh, what this person is saying is true. At your age. At your age. <laughs> Be careful because you can't get, a, you know, another job. <laughs> you see, at your, at your age. That is what people will say, at your age. And when you want to move, move to another job, say, hey, be careful because tell it, and then they'll begin to quote some, you know, some bogus uh, um, African proverbs. Hey, the devil you know is better than the angel you don't know. They say, oh, really? It is true. Oh, so then you remain, you remain in this place forever. That there is no promotion, nothing. And you go by such pronouncement. The devil, you know, is better. I mean, how can a devil be better than an angel that you don't know? And then you say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then you get, oh, I plead the blood. 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 You are wasting your time. Which blood to plead? You are just wasting. Yeah. By the time you realize all the bullets, they didn't go anywhere. They are just around you. Because you don't even know how to plead the blood. Pleading the blood is making your confession align with what the word of God says. That's all. That's all. You can believe anything that you want to believe. Oh, you can believe anything. But as for me, I believe what the word of God says. My age is not a disqualifier. No. No. Look at Biden and look at the person that he is, you know, right now. The the other one, even even all his troubles, he is still running. (laughs) And he's approaching 80 years. Biden has crossed 80. Look at them. (laughs) Then you. That at your age, you can't find a job. And you are saying that, you know what? The devil you know is better than the angel you know. That is your profession. I prefer an angel any day. You see, so then the blood of Jesus is a powerful weapon. But look at the way you are using it. Oh, Lord, help me. Never get, no, get up and say, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. Because you are not pleading nothing. There is nothing you are pleading. And this blood that you are pleading, the Bible says that that blood, it speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Mm. The blood that you are pleading, it speaks better things. But look at your confession. Look at your confession. That blood speaks better things. That blood cries for forgiveness. Mm. Abel's blood cries for revenge. Mm. But Jesus' blood cries for what? Forgiveness. It speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So if you are pleading the blood, know what you are pleading. And make sure that your confession aligns with the word of God. Amen. You understand? Yes, Oh, yeah. Don't look at the mountain in front of you. Don't. If you consider, you will not sow. If you consider the mountains, you will not move. You will not. You know, I remember when I first came to America with my you know, briefcase in you know, Wall Street, and then I was asking myself, this vast place, where am I going? Where are you going? Where? Are you going? And people will tell you all sorts of things. But make sure that whatever you hear aligns with the word of God. Because your confession Mm. is what your high priest is going to repeat. So no confession. And then if you also don't confess anything, Zero. zero. 
I confess that I will be the head and not the tail. I confess that with long life, you will satisfy me and show me your salvation. But the problem too we have is that we don't know what the Bible says concerning our individual situations. So then we are open to negative confession. And African proverbs. Because you have heard it before. You have heard it several times. Somebody will come and say, if you examine the eyes of a dead person, you will see worms. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 know, you know that one. That one there, you know it. <laughs> you don't know the word of God. You don't know the word of God. That he himself, he himself took our infirmities. Yeah, that is what the word of God says. We are redeemed. Uh, please, um, Ephesians 1 verse 7. What does the word of God say that the blood of Jesus has done for us? What does it say? What does the word say concerning your situation? Your, your profession or your confession must align with the word of God. Amen. The Bible says that I have been young and I have been old. And I've never yes. seen the righteous, the righteous forsaken. So Lord, I know you, you will never forsake me. Yes. Never will you forsake me. Never will you forsake me. Look at what the scripture says. In whom we have what? Redemption. Through his blood. So through his blood, we have redemption. Redemption. So the Bible says that let the one who is redeemed say so. So if through the blood you have been redeemed, and the Bible says that let the redeemed of the Lord say so, then I have to say that, Father, I thank you. The Bible says that if I am redeemed, I have to say so. Through the blood, I am forgiven. Amen. The devil cannot accuse me of my sins because the Bible says that through the blood, the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed. I am redeemed for my past sins, for my future sins, from every sin. So I will not allow the devil to cast aspersions and make me feel bad. Because through the blood, the Bible says that what? I am forgiven. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. If you don't know this scripture, you always feel bad. Because the devil is an expert in reminding you of your sins. Hey, sometimes you are praying, or then he will drop some idea B, idea C B, some sins B that you committed. Ah, he will be, he will give you two shots. Pa, pa. Then as you are flying up there. Come down. Oh. One day somebody was leading, this guy was leading powerful praise and worship. Powerful. Powerful praise and worship. Oh, the thing was charged. Then suddenly, what did he see? His old beloved be that he has not seen from the girl just walked. Oh. Oh, the whole thing came to an end. Accus the devil, eh? if you, if you, <laughs> accusations. But he should have just stood on his ground and said, that, listen, I am the redeemed of the Lord. Listen, I'm forgiven. Through the blood, uh, through the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed. But Charlie, it did not work for him, Kura. Look at 1 Peter 18 and 19. 1 Peter 18 and 19. 1 Peter 18 and 19. So this is your confessional. You must learn it. Learn it. Read the Bible like a storybook. 1 Peter 18, please. 1 Peter 1, 18. Oh, who is sharing the thing now? For as much as ye know, 
For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things. What are corruptible things? Silver and gold, corruptible. <laughs> but, but you see, those are the things that you are chasing after. Those are the things that make you alive. You will be asleep. But once we mention silver and gold, hey. But the Bible says that you were not redeemed with corruptible, you know, with corruptible things as silver and gold. So silver and gold, what are they? Corruptible. You see, and in America, you have to be very careful because there is extreme love for money. People's relationship with you, right, is all about money. It's all about money. I'm, you know, I'm chasing after you. I am chasing after you. I am chasing after you. You don't pay me any mind. But the moment you see some wires, some money, hey, hey, I, I mean, you will change, isn't it? When you see your husband's a- account, you will have a proper, you know, respect for him. True or not true? It's true. Have a proper respect for him now. Don't wait till you see the money. Why? Because, 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 because they are, no, no, they are corruptible things. Why will money let you have a proper respect for the man that you live with? And it is true. Oh, yeah. I mean, the way you will even serve him and the way you will cook, it will be different. Hey, it's fresher. Special yeah. spices for the, for the money. Special plates. Yeah. But now the place that the children use, hey, Charlie. Everybody. The day you will eat good is when you have a visitor. Then you will go and sit on the high table. And they will bring all the bowls. The food that you have not seen for two years. And then, and then, and then you will just ask yourself, what's going on here? And sometimes we are even angry at the visitor. <laughs> yeah, you just came and look at how they are yeah, how they are serving you, and then and then how they are treating you. Yeah, your, the visitor will get a ride to the train station by you, even when it is snowing, it is raining. You just go pick the umbrella. Where 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 your um, waterproof uh, uh, um, shoes and go. And then you are also always praying that the visitor will pass by so that you get some nice food to eat. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you for a fact, we are joking about it, but the moment you see that there's something heavy in that account, that is what it is. And this is what is causing your respect for that person. The Bible says that it, yeah. It's corruptible. Ah, okay. Thank you. You know, thank God for turning point service. It is it no silver and gold. It is corruptible. Wow. It is corruptible. But you see, a good man will be passed over because he has corruptible things. You will not have any respect because you don't have corruptible things. And the Bible says that, so, yeah. And then it says that from your vain conversations, vain conversations, received by tradition from your forefathers, including African proverbs. <laughs> Are you understanding the scriptures? Oh, yes. Yeah. I hope somebody is being blessed. Yeah. I am blessed, Reverend. Look at. Cleansing. The blood has also cleansed us. Look at 1 John 1, 7. 1 John 1 and verse number 7. 1 John 1, 7. Kabon, kaban, kabo, kabete, yaza. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And what else? The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us. From all sin. 
So if you want to be cleansed from all sin, you have to walk in the light. In the light. In the light. Because the blood cleanses people who walk in the light. Not in darkness. Because the Bible says that the sprinkling of the blood is for the obedient. So if you walk in the light, the blood works for you. Amen. If you don't walk in the light, you are not cleansed. Is it simple? Yes. It's simple. Yes. So I can move on. Yes. Okay, so let's move on to justification. Romans 5 verse 8 and 9. Romans 5, 8 and 9. Are you understanding this simple message? Okay. But God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Nine. Much more than being now justified. We are justified by what? By his blood. That is what the Bible says that the blood of Jesus has done for us. We are justified. We shall be saved from wrath through him. What does it mean to be justified? To be justified means that you are a sinner, but you have been acquitted. Right? You were accused. Yes, you killed. Yes, you committed sin. Yes, you are at fault. But Jesus said that, listen, I have paid his price. The debt that he owed, I have paid it. And because I have paid it, he is justified. Amen. As though you have not sinned. And that is who we are. Because we agree and we accept what Christ has done for us, we are justified. As though we have never sinned. We are angels. We are saints. So we are justified by the blood. So you don't have to allow anybody to remind you of your past sins. So that praise and worship leader, he should not have allowed the devil to cast aspersions. Should have been confessing. That is why the Bible says that testimony, confession, testimony, testimony, confess it. As you confess the word of God, you are strengthened and you are empowered. Can I move on? Wonderful. Look at 2 Corinthians 5.21. 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. This is what the blood of Jesus has done for us. Now we are the righteousness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I said now we are what? We are the righteousness of God. Through the blood. Through the blood. Through the blood. Look at sanctification. Hebrews 13 verse number 12. Hebrews 13 verse number 12. Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. How were we sanctified? How were we sanctified? You are not paying attention. How were we sanctified? Through the blood. Through the blood we're sanctified. To be sanctified means that you are holy. You are set apart. So St. Andrew, St. Esther, St. Emma, St. Bright. So, Bright, if if we say St. Bright and somebody says, yeah, then you quote this scripture. Through the blood. Jesus, you are, you see, you are set aside. You are holy. Set aside. But you see, sometimes even when they call you saint, bright, you yourself, you don't believe it. You don't believe it. So it does not work. But you have to believe it. To work for you. Amen. Hallelujah. I say you have to do what? You have to believe it. If you don't believe it, it will not work. Hebrews 10, verse number 19. Hebrews 10, 19. 
through the blood of Jesus, we have access. If you have access to President Biden, you'll be happy. If you have access to former President Trump, you will be happy. Okay, all right. Oh, oh, okay, all right. When you go home, you debate. <laughs> Let's, you know, look at it. Having therefore, brethren, listen. Having therefore, brethren, boldness. Where do we get the boldness from? He says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest. Hey, by what? By the blood of Jesus, Amen. you have access into the holiest. Before Jesus, you could not enter there. You would have been cast down. Therefore, ha- b- brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood. Because of the blood, we have boldness. Not that you are timid as you enter. And then they'll say, who, who is there? Come in. they say, oh, me. Who is me? Don't, who is me? Who is there? I. Who is I? But if you have boldness, you mention your name. The Bible says that through the blood we have boldness to enter into the holiest, the blood of Jesus. Let's continue. Let's continue. By a new and living way which he had consecrated for us, we can't enter the holiest through our old way, but through a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us. Through the veil, that is to say his flesh. So through Jesus' flesh, through his sacrifice, through the blood, now we can enter into the holiest. Let's continue. And having an high priest over the house of God. Continue. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our bodies washed with pure water. Hallelujah. Look at what the blood has done for us. Isn't that wonderful? That is wonderful. I pray you understand this scripture. So then you will know who you are. You understand? Yes. Because so many Christians sell themselves short. They think that God's power is on somebody. But over there, it's not. But look at what God says about you. Continue, please. Continue this. Let us hold fast our what? What did I say is profession? Your confession. confession. So hold fast. So never confess negative things. Look at what God has done for you from verse 19 to 22. Why are you still confessing negative things? Why are you still saying that you are not able? Why are you still not moving forward? Why are you still marking down from what God has done for you from verse 19 to 22? You are still at a standstill. You are not moving. Why? It says, because of that, let us hold fast the profession, which is also confession of what? Our faith. faith. Without wavering. Without Without what? Without what? So your testimony... Please, can you bring me the New Living Translation for this scripture? New Living Translation, please. Fast. Without wavering. Without wavering. Who waves? We are the ones. What causes us to wave? What causes us to waver? What causes us to doubt? It's unbelief. But the Bible says that without wavering, there are things that causes us to waver. We don't believe. So the Bible says that without wavering, let us hold tightly to the hope we say we have. 
Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So don't waver, but rather let us hold on tightly to the hope we have. For God, hello, are you following me? Why do we have to hold on to faith tightly? The answer is there. It says, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. For God can be trusted. It says, without wavering, let us hold tightly to the hope we say we have. Do we have hope? And we say we have hope. Is that not the case? We say we have hope. He says, without wavering, let us hold tightly to the hope we say we have. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Do you believe it? Oh, yes. Listen, don't look at things around. For God is able to keep his promise. Look at Hebrews 3, 1. Quickly, Hebrews 3, 1. Hebrews 3, 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, who belong to God? Do we belong to God? Yes. And are we bound for heaven? Yes. It says, think about this Jesus, whom we declared to be God's messenger, our high priest. So here, the Bible says that Jesus is our high priest, right? Yes. Look at Hebrews 4, 14. Quickly. Jesus is our high priest here. So Hebrews 3, 1, Jesus is our high priest. Look at Hebrews 4, 14. This is why we have a great high priest who has gone to heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us cling. Let us do what? Cling Cling to him and never stop trusting. So cling to him means that you have to buckle up. We have to do what? Buckle up. So cling to him means strap yourself. All right? And then look at Hebrews 10, 23. Hebrews 10, 23. Hebrews 10, 23. Without wavering, let us hold tightly to the hope. Listen, when you are airborne and then they tell you to fasten your seatbelt, what does that tell you? There will be what? There will be turbulence. That is why they are telling you to fasten your seatbelt. So God is saying to us tonight that fasten your seatbelt because the Christian life, it involves what? Turbulence. But once you fasten your seatbelt, you will be okay. So the turbulence will come. But our high priest is always there. And he will keep the promises. So hold on. Even if you are going through turbulence, hold on. Hold on. Because now there are Christians who have come these days. Oh, man. The small thing or they are crying. Nobody likes me. Nobody likes me. Who said nobody likes you? Look at your confession. Nobody likes you. That is not you know, a proper confession. That is not. God is saying that for God can be trusted Amen. to keep his promise. So, when you are going through the turbulence, fasten your seatbelt and hold on. Hold on and I keep telling this person, or I said, listen, if God says that he will keep you, strap yourself, it means that turbulence is along the way. But when you keep the belt fastened, mm. when you see the light on, that fasten your seatbelt, it means that there is going to be turbulence. But go through the turbulence. Amen. Press through the turbulence. Amen. Never give up. Never For give up. God can be trusted to keep his promise. He will guide you through the turbulence. Because he is our awesome God. Let's read one last scripture. And then we'll call it a day. I hope you are understanding what I'm saying. Okay. Look at Hebrews 12, verse number 22. Hebrews 12, verse number 22. Kabando. 
Rabakatusaprikasianda. We will read from the New Living Translation, and then we will read the King James. No, no, no. You have come to Mount Zion. Let's go to verse number 20 so that we will understand what the no means. They staggered back under God's command. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. Continue. Continue. Moses himself was so frightened at the sight that he said, I am terrified and trembling. 22. No, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Continue. Continue. You have come to the assembly of God's firstborn children whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God himself who is the judge of all people and you have come to the spirits of the redeemed in heaven who have now been made perfect. Continue. You have come to Jesus the one who mediates the new covenant between God and people, right? And to the sprinkled blood which graciously forgives instead of crying out for vengeance as the blood of Abel did. Do you understand the scripture? Go to verse number 25. See to it that you obey God, the one who is speaking to you. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger, how terrible our danger if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. You understand? Look at what the blood has done. It's verse 24. It says the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. It says the sprinkled blood of Jesus. Right? The sprinkled blood of Jesus, which graciously, gracious, the word is gracious. Gracious. Gracious is the word. He did not deal with us according to our sins, but graciously forgives instead of crying out for vengeance. So Jesus' blood does not cry for vengeance. Christ for forgiveness. Christ for what? Forgiveness. Unlike the blood of Abel, that cries for vengeance. The blood of Jesus cries for what? Christ for forgiveness. Amen. Christ for what? So if you go to verse 25, what does it say? Verse 25, verse 25 says, see to it that you obey God. God is saying that his blood, his blood cries for forgiveness. And you are still thinking that God, I mean, your sins are just too, many, you know, too much. You have done so many wrongs that God cannot forgive you. He says, see to it that you obey God. The one who is speaking to you. Amen. God is saying that because of what his blood has done, we must see to it that we are obeying him. Amen. And the one is speaking, speaking to you, obey him, the one speaking to you. For, and then he's saying that for if the people of Israel did not escape, sometimes we think that we can escape. I mean, you are so important to God. God likes people with sister locks. So he will just spare you. <laughs> you know, sometimes we can lie to ourselves, right? That I'm so important. I don't think that, oh, God will just, uh, uh, um, God will just do anything. Nah. But that is not what it is. It's not like that. 
He says, for if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger, how terrible our danger if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. There is power in, in the blood, man. There is power. There is power. We have to understand it. So that when we are using the blood as a weapon, then we can use it well. Because the devil is afraid of the precious blood. The Bible says that we overcome Satan through the blood of the Lamb. By the words, the words of your testimony, the things you say. The things you say. You go to the doctor, you, you know everything that the doctor said, but you don't remember the message that I preached last week, but everything that the doctor said, you, you know, I mean, you remember everything. The complications you remember, the disease, it starts from A, it ends in Z. You remember everything. But the word of God, you don't remember. The Bible says that by his stripes, we are healed. And on the cross, what did he say? He cried and said that what? It is finished. What did he finish? He finished everything that concerns you. Everything that concerns you. He finished it. He finished your financial problems. He finished it. Your sickness. He finished it. That craziness that comes upon you sometimes. You know, he finished it. That problem that makes you sleepless. Your children who give you wahala. I mean, he finished sorting everything out. Amen. This is your school that every day you stay there through the night. And you think that you have butchered the exam. But by the time you get your results, you, are, you know, you barely, you barely skip C. He finished everything. And what we need to do is to have faith to believe. Amen. What God has done. Shall we be on our feet? Oh, powerful. And just pray. Just pray that Father give me understanding of how to appropriate the blood of Jesus. Lambro kasianda raba shekiende. Si labro kasianda raba shekiando. Father, I overcome every power of Satan through the blood through the words of my testimony Father through the blood I am redeemed through the blood I am sanctified through the blood I can enter into the holy place Through the blood, Father, I am sanctified. Through the blood, beloved, lift up your voice and pray. Kadoria Masakia, Lambro Kasianda Babashekia. The Bible says that let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The redeemed of the Lord, he does not keep quiet. But the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Karamazo Chalaba, Rabazato Kataliander. Say so if you have been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus, you have to say so. Ramazando Kabelia, Ramado Zabala Kadorianda, Yamazato Kabelia, the Rabashaki, Alababa Kaboria, and the Rabababa. The redeemed of the Lord, say so, say so. Lift up your voice, open your mouth, and say so. Declare what the Bible says that the blood of Jesus has done for you. Let's go. 
Amor.